Welcome, folks. I want to talk about orbit and stabilizers. Um, we're building up to the orbit stabilizer theorem, which is useful for the following. So let's say you have some symmetric object like a cube, and you have a group of symmetries, like all rotations of the cube. And you want to be able to quickly identify how many rotations of the cube do I have? Um, how many different rotations of the cube you know, map the cube onto itself? Okay. The orbit stabilizer theorem is, is what allows us to do this. So the two main ingredients of the orbit stabilizer theorem are orbits and stabilizers. This first video will be an introduction to stabilizers. Okay. So let me talk through an example stabilizer um, before we write down the notation. Let's say I have the rotations of this cube. I can think of the rotations as acting on the six faces. So every rotation can be described as a permutation of where it maps the faces. You know, it may be this, this rotation and maps the right face onto the top face and it maps the top face onto the left face and it maps the left face onto the bottom face. It fixes the front face. It sends the front face to itself and it also sends the back face to itself. Okay, let's pick a face. So maybe let's pick the right face. The stabilizer of the right face is going to be only those rotations that map the right face to itself. So this rotation is not going to be in the stabilizer of the right face because it doesn't send the right face to itself. But these rotations are going to be in the stabilizer of the right face. They do send the right face to itself. So more generally, let G be a group of permutations of a set S. Here, G is the group of rotations of the cube, and S is going to be our six faces of the cube. For each face in the cube, the stabilizer of that face is going to be denoted the stabilizer of this face I or element I in this group G. It's the set of all group elements that map that face to itself. Okay, we map this face to itself. So Let's talk about some examples. If G is the rotational symmetries of a cube, then the stabilizer of, um, let's just call this, um, you know, face one, for example, it's going to be isomorphic to just four rotations. You know, you could rotate by zero degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, or um, or 90 degrees. I don't know why I chose this order. <laughs> okay, but but I'm thinking about rotations through this axis. So if I'm trying to fix this right face, okay, then there are four rotations that fix this right face. They're rotations through this axis. And, um, and um, yeah. Okay, let me give you another example. What if our group is all symmetries of three elements? So all, our per, all permutations of three elements. Okay, the stabilizer in this group of the element one, this is just gonna be all permutations that, that fix one. So the identity fixes one and this two cycle two, three, it fixes one, right? Because if I draw this two cycle two, three, it swaps two and three, but it fixes one, it sends one to itself. I'm not gonna have any uh, three cycles as stabilizers, right? Because these three cycles, say that send one to two and two to three and three back to one, they don't fix any elements. 
so they're not going to be in any stabilizers. The stabilizer of two is analogous. It's just the identity in this transposition one, three. And the stabilizer of three is analogous, just the identity and the transposition one, two. Let me do a um, more complicated example. Okay. So let G be the following subgroup of all permutations of S8, but we're only going to include a subgroup of them. We're not going to include all of them. So G is going to have the identity. It's going to have this permutation 1, 3, 2, 4, 6, 5, 7, 8. It's going to have this permutation 1, 3, 2, 4, 6, 5. It's going to have this permutation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It'll have a permutation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And finally, just the two cycle, seven, eight. Okay, so S8 has eight factorial elements, but this subgroup has only six. Okay, so it's a subgroup of size six inside of the much larger group S8. Let's find some stabilizers, okay? Let's find, for example, the stabilizer of one, the stabilizer of two, the stabilizer of three, and, and the stabilizer of four. You could also find the stabilizer of five, six, seven, and eight, but we won't. In, in fact, let me let me change um, these numbers here. Let's do more illustrative numbers. Let's do one, two, four, and seven. Okay, so you could also find the stabilizer of three, five, six, and eight, but we won't. So we go back to our definition. The stabilizer of one under this group action is all of the group elements that send one to itself. So we're going to look at these group elements and see which of them map one to itself. The identity maps one to itself. This sends one to three. This permutation also sends one to three. This permutation sends one to two. This permutation sends one to two. But this permutation fixes one. Okay. So the only elements that fix one are the identity and this two cycle. And I think that's the same for two. So the identity fixes two. This permutation sends two to one. This permutation sends two to one. This permutation sends two to three. This permutation sends two to three, but seven, eight fixes two. I think it's similar for four. That's a stabilizer. The stabilizer for seven will look different. So the identity fixes seven. This does not fix seven, it sends seven to eight. Here, this permutation fixes seven. Um, this permutation also fixes seven. And that's it. These last two permutations don't. An important remark 
is that a stabilizer of any um, element I in the set is always a subgroup of G. So consider this example on the cube. You know, I have 24 different rotations of the cube. If I fix a face and ask what's the stabilizer, the rotation's fixing that face, there's only four rotations fixing that face. But those four rotations form a subgroup. Okay. Similarly here, these are all valid subgroups, you know, of size two or three of this larger group of size six. Public questions about stabilizers? All right, thanks. <laughs>